And actually, you mentioned you have the, the pocket, the full man pocket. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, it brought to mind an uh, 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 episode I saw in the news where they had a person there explaining how they were able to save money. And uh, it, was a very, it, it appeared to be a very productive way to save money. Right. Uh, basically, what they was what they decided to do was to take to choose a denomination uh, from their money and just not spend it. Say, for instance, you choose five dollars, and out of any any change or any monies that you get, the five dollars, if that's the, the denomination that you chose, you just don't spend it. Right. You set it aside. You know, two hundred and fifty dollars a year. And when I saw that, you know, and I saw how much money accumulated from just doing that, right. I was thinking to myself, what a great idea. And I'm saying that only to say with this meeting involved, you know, for for those who don't have incomes, but you know, occasionally have money, you know, maybe we can use that same method of just putting that one denomination aside, you know, and and, and that could be something that you can offer to the to the group. You know, in a way that doesn't hurt you too bad. That's because right. this method seems to be a way where it doesn't hurt too mm -hmm. bad. You just have to consciously uh, do it. And because you're choosing it as a system to do, it makes it easier to remind yourself. Right. I'm not spending five. Right. You know, so $5 more. dollars every week is going to be put aside, and I'm going to leave it. Leave it alone. Yeah. Yo, or $10 every, or $20. Uh, the the best price. system I've ever heard, my favorite, is 10, 10, 80. 10% 10 to God, 10% to you. 80% you write checks. And when you get down to $5, you just put your pen down. Because anybody who won't wait for $5 wasn't going to wait anyway. And literally, you stop at that point. Why? You'll never bounce a check, because there's always $5 in your bank account. You will pay bills as far as you can. Because Pop taught me well. I've had to tell one more, more than one bill collector, you'll get paid when I get some money. But when's that going to be? I don't know. But whatever I get, I'll see you something. <laughs> but you won't be getting any until I do. Because I don't have it. But why don't you post that check? Why don't you post that check? Send it to me. I keep it. Let her, I ain't going to cash it. Yeah, right. The minute you write a check, ladies and gentlemen, what you said is I have money. I don't know if you know this, but that's actually bank fraud. You can actually go to prison rather than them bounce your check. They can actually come lock you up. Why can they do so? Because you're claiming money that you don't have. And they have every right to lock you up if they choose. Now, they don't. They charge you $36. I know because I went through it recently. It was a bad listing in my check ledger, and I paid for it. My bank had a ball because I always balance and I check every week, but I was busy. And that week I didn't check, and I made a bad check listing. Because I listed it wrong, a group of checks came in for about $10 each, and they nailed me to the wall. Ooh, they're going to pay for this. But it's cool. It's cool for now. It's cool for now. I will go back and ask for my money later, but you know, I want to get like a year behind me where I haven't done anything. We'll go back and say, pull that up, I want my money back. And of course, they'll give it to me then. They've done it before. But the point is, we have to be more responsible. And most of us are functioning without a cushion. We're just out there, and that's got to change. And the old folks in the South, Thomas of Staten Island, man, they have a coffee can, or in a mattress, or a pillow. Dead ass money, you better not go in there and touch it. Because that was hard time money. What was he making? $10 a week. Daddy managed to squeeze out some of that Jim Hoffman and put it away. Coffee can in a, in a loose plank in the wall. Everybody knew it was there, and if you want to live, you better not touch it. And nobody ever did. The point is, we've got to redevelop some of that. You're absolutely right. We've got to get back to some commonsensical approach. Uh, Ed Brownlee is a master of wealth transference. He, at some point, I'm hoping we will be able to get in to do a presentation on wealth transference. Anybody. Anybody, I don't care who, who says to you, I'm going to spend it all, I ain't going to leave my children nothing, is crazy. You can tell them I said something. Quincy said, you crazy. But no, you better not, because they didn't be mad at you.